when you want to start developing uh, applications which are using Apache Kafka, it's uh, quite easy. You can just go to uh, kafka.apache.org, there go to the download section and uh, download one of the binaries and uh, then uh, once you have it downloaded, because Kafka is based on Java virtual machines, uh, you really just unpack it, start the Zookeeper and Kafka with the prepared script and uh, you can start developing right away. But sometimes you might need something more. You might uh, want to develop against a Kafka cluster with multiple nodes, which uh, where you are able to use the replication or test things such as failovers. Or maybe you need some more advanced configurations like uh, to enable encryption or authentication. And uh, that's not that easy anymore with the downloaded binaries. And that's where it might be easier using the stream the operators and uh, using a Kafka cluster which you deploy using StreamZ. You can run Kafka cluster with StreamZ on uh, some big Kubernetes cluster somewhere in the cloud or on some dedicated bare metal servers but you can also do it on your local laptop or PC whatever you have uh, with uh, Minikube. In my case I'm using the Minikube 1.9.2 which uh, will run Kubernetes 1.18, uh, but as long as you are not using some uh, totally old version of Minikube, uh, the version should not matter that much. What is really needed is uh, to have one of the newer versions which support load balancers, because we will use them to access Kafka from our local IDE. And as you can see, I have my Minikube pre-configured to use quite a lot of resources, uh, 16 gigs of RAM and 6 CPU cores. But you normally don't need uh, that much for some simple small Kafka cluster. Uh, you should normally have at least 4 gigs of RAM, but uh, depending on how many resources do you have on your laptop or PC, uh, usually having more resources available does not hurt. Now when the Minikube is running, we can uh, proceed and uh, deploy the StreamZ operator. You can always get uh, latest version of the StreamZ operator from uh, this nice URL streamz.io slash install slash latest that gives you the latest installation YAML files for the latest stable StreamZ release but because StreamZ is using cluster role bindings you can't just apply it with kubectl uh, uh, because they have hard-coded namespaces which cannot be changed with the dash dash namespace option. So what we have to do is uh, we have to pipe it uh, into a set command which we will use to replace uh, the namespace names with uh, the namespace where we are going to install it in our case it will be default and uh, so the set will change the namespace and all the resources and then we just pipe it into kubectl apply dash f and then we use uh, another dash to tell it to use the input from uh, standard in and that will create the resources and uh, that will create the StreamZ cluster operator, operator pod and uh, after it pulls the image we should get the StreamZ operator up and running. With the StreamZ operator being ready now we can proceed and deploy the Kafka cluster. We will use uh, again uh, one of the examples available on the streams website streamsio slash examples slash latest slash Kafka and we will use the example which is using persistent uh, storage persistent volumes are supported uh, out of the box in Minikube so uh, we can make some use of it and uh, before we actually deploy this resource we have to slightly modify it we will add the external 
listener which will use uh, load balancers for load balancers for the access from the ID which will run locally and for the beginning to make the things easier we will disable the TLS encryption and uh, authentication and uh, now when we have the custom resource ready we just have to create it so kubectl apply from standard input uh, and looks like I have typo it should be singular not plural so that should get the cluster deployed uh, you can see the first pods being created but because we are using load balancers we have to in a separate terminal run this minikube tunnel command which will enable the minikube support for load balancers and it will probably ask for the root password so that it can uh, configure network interfaces for load balancers but this minikube tunnel utility that's what will make the uh, load balancer type services which the streamz operator will use to deploy the kafka cluster uh, it will make them available give them an ip address which we can use from uh, our id to access the kafka cluster so now with the tunnel running and the pods being created all we need to do is to watch and wait for uh, the cluster to be ready we can use this uh, kubectl wait command so kubectl wait kafka slash my cluster for condition ready and let's give it some time out of uh, let's say 300 seconds and now we just wait until the cluster is ready and uh, it was actually quite fast so uh, the cluster should be ready let's check the pods uh, you can see that all of them are running and we can also uh, check the status of the Kafka resource which is important because it contains this IP address which is where we will use to connect uh, with uh, the clients from the IDE when developing our application here in my uh, IntelliJ IDE I have uh, already a simple application prepared which is using Kafka I have the Kafka clients already as a dependency and I have these kind of skeleton uh, producer and consumer applications they don't do much they really just uh, send some dummy hello world record and uh, receive the hello world record so all we need to do in is to fill in the bootstrap server address and to do that we will uh, use the IP address and the port number from uh, the status of our Kafka custom resource so let's uh, copy the address and let's place it here port 9094 and let's try to run the producer it did some compilation it created the topic and you can see that it sent a message which ended up in the partition 0 offset 0 and we can of course just rerun it to send another one which ends up on offset 1 and so on and we can do the same with the consumer as well so let's again paste the IP address with 9094 port and let's run the consumer and uh, what we can see here is that it's joining the group and it got the two hello world message the null here that's the key which we didn't specify in the producer so that's okay so uh, we are already connected to our kafka cluster running uh, inside minikube from uh, the local ide if you already worked with kafka Maybe you noticed that we never created uh, the topic. Uh, in our case, the test topic, which we used by the producer and consumer. 
basically the topic which we used was just auto created by Kafka with the default settings and uh, that's not always uh, what we want sometimes we want to use the topic with some specific configuration maybe some compacting policy or some retention or uh, configure the partitions and uh, replicas and so on we can of course use uh, the regular kafka tools to manage the topics in our kafka cluster uh, so for example the kafka topics utility which is part of the kafka binaries uh, works completely fine you just point it to the ip address and port and you can manage the topics alternatively you can uh, of course use also streamsy to create the topic and uh, that's what we're gonna do here so let's use another example streamsy resource streamsy.io slash examples slash latest slash topic and let's use a kafka topic example and uh, this is just the default example but we want something special so maybe we want uh, three partitions with three replicas so that we can test uh, some failovers uh, and the replication if you want you can also in this config section add whatever configuration you need for the topic such as uh, compacting policies uh, whatever you might need and now we will again use this uh, kubectl apply which will create the topic and now we can just go back to the IDE let's go to the producer and let's change it to use uh, my topic and let's run it and we can now see we are using different topics so the message was sent to the topic my topic partition 0 offset 0 and now when I rerun it I can actually see that I have now multiple partitions because this message ended up in the partition 1 and the next one will probably end up in the partition uh, oh, 1 again so we can see that the topic really exists and has uh, different partitions we can now try this from the consumer as well and it joins the group and it receives the messages so uh, yeah if we need something uh, some special configuration of our topic then uh, we can of course uh, use that as well as i mentioned in the beginning one of the advantages of using uh, streamsy is that you get uh, things like tls encryption very easily so all we really need to do here instead of generating some certificates and uh, editing some config files and so on is uh, to do kubectl edit kafka my cluster and here we change the tls flag for the external listener from false to true we save the changes and uh, the operator will start rolling the cluster and uh, enabling the TLS on it. While it is doing this, we will have to get the, because Streams is by default using its own TLS certificates, we just need to copy the trust store out of one of the secrets so that we can use it in our application. Remember that the secrets are always uh, base64 encoded. So if you just do get oh, kubectl get secret my cluster ca cert dash o yamo what you will get is uh, the values which are base64 encoded so you cannot copy them directly from here instead uh, you will need to do something like this instead of dash o yamo we will do dash o json path and uh, as the path we will tell it to get us data dot ca p12 
and then we have to base64 decode it and store it into a file and uh, we need to get the password for the trust store as well this is the base64 encoded password we have to decode it again so this should be the actual real password and now we have to take this uh, CAP12 file and the password and use it in our application so what we can do in the producer is first of all we have to change the security protocol config from plain text to SSL and we will need to add some more options as well so uh, the options for TLS configuration are in this uh, SSL configs class and we will need to specify SSL trust or password config which will be our password and the SSL trust or location which will be the path to our uh, p12 file with the trust store and that should be all we should need so uh, let's see if it works and you can see that we connected and managed to send the message and we can really just uh, copy these settings to the consumer as well and see that it works in the consumer and we got the message so uh, yeah it works fine with the consumer as well another thing which you can easily configure with uh, Streamzy is uh, authentication and authorization Streamzy supports uh, several types of authentication for example using Scrum SHA 512 using OAuth tokens or using TLS certificates in uh, this demo I will use the Scrum SHA 512 mechanism which does the authentication using username and password and all I need to do to enable it is uh, to add the authentication to the configuration in the Kafka custom resource so type scrum sha 512 and when I'm in it I will enable authorization as well oh, it has to be without typos of course authorization type simple and I will use the simple ACL authorizer which is part of the Apache Kafka project uh, itself let's save the changes and we will again see how uh, the operator is doing uh, the rolling update for us to change the configuration but since we enable the authentication and authorization we will actually need to create a user and we will again use one of the Streamzy examples uh, as a starting point so https streamzy.io slash examples slash latest slash user slash kafka user .yaml. and let's again use vim to edit it before we save it so the example by default use tls authentication so let's change it to scrum sha 512 the username is uh, my user that's always the same as the name of the kafka user resource and uh, uh, we have also some ACL rules here for this user which actually give it the right to uh, uh, use the topic my topic for sending and receiving messages so uh, we can just use this so let's apply this resource and what Streamzy will do is Streamzy will create uh, a secret with the password which was generated for this user so we now again uh, have to uh, get uh, the password from the secret 
the secret has always the same name as the username was so we can see the secret here and we can see that the password is under the password key but we need to do again uh, this uh, base64 decoding so json path and now it will be data.password and uh, yeah we need to do the base64 decoding and let's uh, copy the password again because we will need to use it uh, in our uh, client applications so in our producer we need to change the configuration a bit to use the SASL authentication so first of all the security protocol needs to be now set to SASL underscore SSL because we are using SASL authentication over SSL and uh, we need to also put the SASL mechanism which in our case is Scrum SHA 512 and last but not least because the Java client is using uh, JAS for uh, the SASL mechanisms we need to configure that as well and that's uh, always hard to write because it's this terrible path to the login module org apache dot kafka dot common dot security dot scram dot scram login module and this is required username is uh, we have to escape the quotes uh, because we have this in another quotes so username is my user password is uh, now we paste the password which we got from the secret and i think that should be it so let's save it and let's try to run the application let's hope there are no typos because that's a lot of writing but it seems to work fine and it actually sent successfully a message so we can really just copy this whole uh, configuration block use it in our uh, consumer and the consumer should now work as well and yeah in the acls if you remember the user said that we are allowed to use the my group not my local group so you can see that the acls uh, actually work in the kafka cluster we just change the group id and run it again and that should fix it and you can see that it got uh, the messages it got actually all of them because we used new group id so as you can see uh, setting up authentication and authorization is uh, easy with streamzy as well streamzy can give you a development kafka cluster which is very similar to your production cluster without any complicated and time consuming configuration that is especially useful for developing and testing some of the more advanced kafka features I hope this demo managed to show uh, how useful Streamzy and Minikube can be during the development and uh, that you are going to use it. You can learn more about uh, Streamzy on our website where you can also find all the downloads and documentation. And if you want, you can also get in touch with us uh, on our Slack channel or uh, on our mailing list.